Hey Adam, we're super excited that you're graduating and super proud of you. A little surprised since you got a 23 and a trig test at one point, but hey, you know, it is what it is. It's been a lot of fun traveling the world with you and going on different adventures. Can't wait for all the adventures in the future. Adam, dude, you're one of my favorite people to uh, do intramurals with and do class projects with. You're one of the few people that are both extremely talented and smart, but yet also very driven. And uh, we cannot wait to see what God has in store for your future. Props, buddy. This one's for you. Oh, could be worse. Oh. <laughs> Joe is your first roommate. I think it's only fitting that I get to go first. So congrats on finally graduating. Congrats, Joe. Uh, it was an honor to have you sleep on top of me for a whole year. And it was really fun listening to you talk in your sleep for a whole semester. Uh, I loved always having a roommate that was down to clown. And uh, I hope that I Am Jersey I passed down to you treated you well. When I was a little baby freshman just coming into the house, I had no idea what I was doing. I was really nervous, but you were there to guide me and show me the ropes. So I really appreciate that. You've been a great mentor. Uh, Joe, congrats on your engagement with Bethany. Can't wait to celebrate you guys at your wedding coming up here soon. Bethany, don't ask Joe about his dead bird until after the wedding night, okay? And uh, everyone watching this should be sure to ask Joe about a very special cowboy hat. And Joe, I thought I would take this opportunity to rub Super Bowl 53 in your face one last time. The Rams suck and Tom Brady will live forever. Go Pats. Now Bucks. <laughs> Mr. President, Joe Babcock. The next door neighbor in the house. Congratulations, man. So happy you're finally retiring. Really enjoyed the retirement party we had and really enjoyed uh, spending the time together here in the White House and getting to know you and getting to see you uh, lead this great organization for the past year. And in all seriousness, man, it's been a pleasure and I'm so glad that you're not moving across the country far away, but you'll still be in St. Louis. So I'm always a phone call away and apparently only two hours now. Love you, man. Congrats. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Ollie. We love you. You're my best friend. And um, I'm going to miss being buddies with you for like school and for like scary movies and stuff like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Ali, you're my first friend in Rolla. And I really appreciate that. And I'm always going to remember that weird game night before I was even a member of CCF when I was a senior in high school. But yeah, I've always enjoyed all of our shenanigans and our love for candles and watching terrible movies together. Ali, I'm so great. <laughs> There's a lot going on upstairs. I'm so grateful that we got to be roommates for a semester. And I'm so thankful that we got to be friends all of this time. Um, I'm so excited for what God has for you and what, whatever plans that he's going to show you. <laughs> I'm appreciative <laughs> for our time in the house. It sounded a lot like that. <laughs> um, have fun. Congrats on graduating. Um, congrats on getting married. Yeah. Um, life Ooh. is going to be good for you for the next <laughs> You say that like it's going to go downhill from there. <laughs> Anyways, Allie, we love you, and we're so excited for you. Congrats on graduating. <laughs> we love you. We love you. Bye. Hey, homegirl. You've done it. You're graduating. All those late nights and early mornings are over. In a few days, you'll be walking across that stage, and I'll be cheering you on from behind a computer screen. I'm so glad we decided to live together because I gained not only the coolest roommate, but also the very best friend that I could possibly have in this entire world. I'm so proud of you and the person that you're becoming. I hope you know that no matter where you go or what you do or what you decide in life, that I will be cheering you on just as loudly as I am on the day that you graduate. I hope your life is filled with nothing but lake days and line dances and ponies and puppy snuggles because you deserve it. Hey Connie, first of all, congrats on graduating. Um, over the last two years, you have been one of my best friends and hopefully we, become, we can become lifelong friends. Uh, good luck with your future endeavors and once again, congrats.
Okay, so originally I was gonna do this whole thing where I like made a montage of your favorite stuff. So I was gonna do like a, your favorite place to work and then show the gym and then like your favorite things to eat and then like Swiss cheese and pickles and then like your favorite place to sleep and I'd show like the door next door to your apartment. But I did it and it just looked really dumb and I didn't like it. <laughs> so instead, I'm just saying that I love you and I'm so proud of everything that you've done at s and Annie. Like, I can't believe you've done undergraduate stuff, graduate stuff all at once. It's, that's just mad to me. And if I had to describe you in three words, it would be um, bubbly, ambitious, and kind-hearted. I think that anytime someone path, like crosses, crosses your path and throughout the day, like you make their day better. Um, I'm not nervous for our future together because I know we're going to be seeing a lot of each other. Um, but I will miss you, but this is not the end. So um, I just want to say I love you and I'm so proud of you. Gideon, you love God well. I miss experiencing your joy, your enthusiasm, and your patience for those who aren't as good as you at foosball. Congrats on graduating. JD, congrats, man. Uh, I want to thank you personally for being such a great friend. Uh, we all know that the only reason I graduated college was because I had you as a roommate to keep me on my toes. So I personally want to thank you for that. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you to be back in Kansas City. Um, I know God has great plans for you, and I'm excited to see what you do there. Hey, Levi. Congratulations, brother. So happy that you're graduating. Looking forward to hearing how your adventure out west goes, and I just, uh, I'm so grateful for the time we got to spend together and the adventures we got to have and looking forward to hearing about uh, the way the Lord keeps working in your life. Phone's always on me, brother. Love you, man. Congrats. Hi, Katie. Happy graduation banquet. Um, I am so excited for you um, and everything that Springfield has for you um, after graduation and this whole next chapter. Um, I'm just so thankful that I have had your friendship for the past four years um how we randomly met and had our same o week group together the first semester freshman year and just being intentional after that um katie you've been such a good friend to me and i'm really thankful for you and this past semester just leading a bible study together with you was really awesome um, i'll be praying for you as you graduate and if you ever get bored you're always welcome to come visit me and i will definitely visit you so i look forward to seeing all the cool things you do What's up, Levi? One of the things, and there are many, that I love the most about you is how seriously you take your faith, and that's one of the highest compliments that I can give anybody. I've appreciated our friendship, especially when I was in Indiana, and we'd call each other up every week just to see um, how things were going. And I also love our time together in CCF, but I really cherish our time together in crew. And just a shout out to all you people out there who are double dipping in campus ministries. Guys, these ones can't talk. Samantha, how are you doing today? I already know that because you're in the other room. <laughs> but um, happy graduation. Uh, remember the time that we met in small group and we became BFFs like the first day? That was nice. Do you remember the first time you met Sam? I do not. Do you? I don't either, but I do remember opening her refrigerator for the first time and there was this asparagus growing out of a mason jar and some homemade sushi and some kind of um, foreign fruit. <laughs> Even though I don't remember the first time that I met CCM, I do remember all of our camping adventures with CCF and all of the fun memories we've made. And I remember the wonderful friend that you meant to us um, and all of the fun, crazy things that we've gotten to do in the last year, so. Yeah, Sam, in all seriousness, we know that none of this is going to be a surprise to you because you're too nosy not to listen to us recording it, but we just want you to know that we love you very much and we're so excited that you're going to still be here when you start this next chapter of your life. Hey, it's been such a blessing being your roommate and getting to know you and seeing as you've grown through college. And, you know, being there for me through all of our crazy antics and late night combos. Much, much laughter. Hannah, I'm just so glad that uh, we met and the season in that tech right before school started last semester was amazing and all the hilarious uh, no filter conversations that we have is <laughs> great and I'm so glad I have your confidence that you won't tell anybody any of those conversations. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
And I appreciate you being the one person who, like, you get it because we are both the same way. And I appreciate all of the vi advice that you give me and I give you that we're just giving to ourselves. <laughs> and all of the antics that we've all been involved in, like Marielle trying to escape through <laughs> your apartment window and all of the plenty of other things that happened in apartment one. But we're gonna miss you. Hannah, it's been a blessing to be your roommate and your friend for these years. I am so excited for you and Danny and whatever God has planned for you. Thanks for always being a good listening ear. I know I can always count on you when I'm having a rough day to just listen <laughs> or give me a hug or cuddles or pile on the floor and <laughs> crush each other. <laughs> That's just how we are. <laughs> But I appreciate you so much, and I am so thankful that I've had a friend like you. Mr. Styron, Cowboy Ben, so proud of you, brother. Super excited, too. Congratulations on graduating. I'm, uh, I'm very happy for you, and I'm looking forward to hearing about your adventures in Arkansas and Oklahoma out on the plains. Uh, just thinking back to all the times we woke up early to go pursue workouts together, and pursuing the Lord with you through FCA and Catalyst and I'm just so proud of you and praying for you always and looking forward to talking with you as as we move through life. Love you brother. Hi Kyla. <laughs> <laughs> oh Kyla, it's been so great getting to know you over the past two years. I am so thankful that you have interned here. Um, you are a great friend and a great mentor, and you always give the best advice. You give good hugs. And you're always down for a great conversation or a great trip or whatever. Kyla, you're so great, and I'm gonna miss you so much. Yeah, I'm really appreciative of all of the advice you've given and all of the sermons you've spoken to Catalyst. Those are always fantastic. And I appreciate seeing you use all of your gifts for the benefit of CCF, whether it be worship or preaching or giving people advice like what Kaylin said. And I'm going to miss being able to wander down to your office to bother you whenever you're <laughs> free or when you're not free and I feel like bothering you. But yeah, I'm gonna miss you a lot, Kyla. And thank you for giving all you have to CCF the last two years. We have something for you. <laughs> a list of your favorite things besides kiwis. We know you're allergic. Hey Caleb, congrats on graduating. It's really cool. We're finally here. Um, you know, I'm graduated. You're about to be graduated here. And, you know, I think it's you know pretty cool. Um, I'm glad we were friends from the very start. Thankful for all the fun we had. Um, and uh, I want to thank you in particular for pushing me to play volleyball our freshman year. Um, that definitely helped me to get out there and play IMs all, you know, through college. Um, so just thanks for pushing me there. Um, and, uh, you know, congrats on graduating. Okay, Caleb. It has been an interesting year and a half with you. I remember when I first moved into this house, my first semester of my freshman year, you were my room leader. And looking back at it now, I'm not convinced you were super qualified for that spot. But we made a lot of good memories along the way. Um, but now I can confidently say that you're qualified for that spot. Over the last year and a half, I've seen you grow tremendously, um, whether that be in your relationships with other people, but especially with your relationship with God. You've just grown to be more mature and just a, just a better indication of what it's like to be a, uh, a strong Christian man. And I'm just thankful for all the memories that we've made, whether that's at volleyball or driving to Colorado or Wisconsin together and just... Um, one of the biggest things I've learned from you is spontaneity. Just getting out of my shell more and we want just to say, let's take a trip and let's make it happen. Um, and I'm thankful for that. Um, and as you graduate this semester, I'm excited to see what the future holds for you, whether that be um, here or whether it be in Georgia, hopefully here. Uh, but yeah, thanks, Caleb. Hey, JD, congratulations on graduating. I'm gonna do something that I planned to do a long time ago. You've been a great friend all throughout college and I'm gonna miss you a lot, but I know we're gonna be friends forever. So I'm not that sad. Bring JD pizza. A pizza like this. I'm cut. 
<laughs> so he's just gonna have to sit there with the pizza he can't eat. <laughs> They open the door, they're like, Crawford. I was like, Where are you going? I, if I had been drinking something, I would have spat it out. Because I was just like, what the frick? A plain, uncut cheese pizza. On the side, I just saw special instructions. Like, oh my gosh. Next time, you gotta I just get a text from some number, probably Robert. Did you order JD a pizza? <laughs> <laughs> I just got a text from JD and said, you know good and well what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting to the bottom of this. I want you to know, Adam, that even if it wasn't you, I'm gonna get you back. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> this uh, this chick, she stopped after class. She said that was savage what you did in there. I'm like, bro, you're a ladies' I man now. Calling Domino's. You're calling Domino? He's gonna ask who made who bought the Give pizza. Space. That's privacy though. I think I'm trying to figure out who ordered it. It's very important. Look the phone number. If I knew that, I would know who did it. Um, can you tell me what he looks like? I have no idea. Did he have a big nose? Final question. I have no idea. Could you just say yes, please? You're using the box to figure out who did this. This is forensics right here. Detective JD on the case? Aunt Debbie, there she is. Aunt Debbie! Simeon! <laughs> oh my gosh! He had no idea! Vacation! Oh it wasn't goodness. me! It wasn't me! You was your idea though, you made him do it. Do you think JD will ever forgive us? I don't think so. He's never, honestly, no. He, w he wouldn't even say that he loved me when he walked out the door. Shame to say this and coming out and saying this, but um, the whole video thing, all of it, is fake. I never was actually mad at Adam or Simeon. Going back on all this, and it, it hurts me, but it's the right thing to do. Thank you. So you actually appreciated the pizza? I appreciated the uncut cheese pizza. <laughs> While I've got you here, I was gonna say, thanks so much for being a great friend. I'm sure we'll still be friends in like, a far away year of, I don't know, 2069 or something, whenever we're in our 70s. I hope everything goes great in Texas for you, and I hope you don't get all discombobulated. Um, I'll miss you, man. Get that pilot's license quick, and fly up here and visit pretty soon, okay? Wait. I like trains. No, 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 no. Hey, you know who's gay? Yeah. I'm Rook, and I approve this message. Hey Adam, could you, uh, could you please clean up your desk? I know I may be annoying asking you, but... I really think it'd be a good habit, you know, if you want to get a wife someday, to emphasize cleanliness. Um, so, I think whenever you want, whenever you want. Hey, JD, what are you working on? I'm uh, just doing some concrete homework. So, you know, I've never actually had concrete, but I'm pretty sure that you're not doing this right. Oh, because, really? Because, really? you know, your yeah. summation of forces should, you know, add up. Oh. To zero. Oh, yeah, and it's totally right. I thought you'd know that. 
you, I, I forget sometimes. That's okay. It's okay, buddy. Yeah. Well, it's okay. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Hey, Sam, what you working on? So I'm actually, uh, I'm doing some programming right now. Me and the, the MSAT team, we're trying to uh, get the, the orbit of the, the satellites. We're trying to get it to, you know, go around the Earth in the correct um, projection. And it's actually really difficult because there's like this, this crazy, there's these crazy uh, equations that we're actually working on. And, you know, it's just, it's just really complicated, you know, and, um, you know, wait, wait, come back, come back, come back. And then, uh, and then, uh, yeah. I'm just gonna go look at check. <laughs> Bro, I can't believe we just like drove to Florida, man. Like, it's like a it's Thursday kind of night. Man. Super tired. I mean, it kind of, it's kind of cold, but. Frick, I'm getting pulled over. <laughs> when you get goodness. pulled over? Bad. Oh my gosh, this always happens to you, right? You know, I was actually, uh, I was watching a documentary the other day, and um, it was pretty cool. It was about the workforce in America and the minimum wage. And so, you know, a way you could get out of the ticket is, um, you know, these people aren't even making that much money, honestly. And I'll just drive off. What? <laughs> Simeon, you were one of my best friends since freshman year. I remember that night we spent in a car about four hours just talking about everything. And ever since then, I've just been so close with you. I've lived with you several different times. And I know you, I feel like better than almost anybody that I know in my life. I love you, man. I'm really sad that you're gonna leave me soon. So, I mean, when I look back on who made my college career fun, you're definitely on the top of that list. Whether it was going to Florida or taking a spontaneous trip to Georgia on Thursday or maybe over a weekend, you're always someone that was down to have fun. I also look back and I think about all the times I didn't know how to do my homework, and you were the first person that was able to tell me how to do it, and I'm just like, probably would be graduating in four and a half without singing. So, buddy, it's not over. We're going to see each other again. You're off to California, but I know that you will continue to stay in touch the rest of our lives. I love you. Uh, Simeon, I'm glad that I've been able to call you my close friend ever since I moved into 111 and what an interesting semester that was. Um, yeah, I really appreciate um, how you've, you know, challenged my way of thinking and, you know, the things that I do. Um, and that's, I think, one of your best qualities is just that um, you're always, you know, looking for a better way to do things and um, you've kind of brought the people around you along with that as well and just really appreciate that about you and just love you man I'm gonna miss you so I just want to say real quick um, well it's gonna cuts off my circulation here um, uh, something really cool that you taught me probably without even realizing you were um, is the idea of not compromising on any part of who you are I've met very very few people who can talk about um, music and space in the same breath and for it to make sense. Um, you're just a very unique, awesome person um, and being able to be in your life group, being able to worship um, with you on Sundays, um, it was just really profound for me to see what it looks like for someone to be uncompromising and, and really have a strong relationship with Christ. So, thank you, Sim. Hey Maddie, I just got here. I'll talk to you later. Love you, babe. Dude, Dude, what, what the frick? What the frick are you doing at my desk? What are you doing here? What are you at home? Huh? You've been floored for three months. Yeah, I don't you're care. not room leader. While you're gone, we made Ryan room leader. Siri, call Maddie.
Skinner, um, as much as I make fun of you for, you know, some of the things you say, and maybe sometimes the way you dress, and maybe some other things, um, I do genuinely love you, Skinner, and I'm glad that I was able to be your roommate this semester. I hope you know that. Skinner, I just want to agree with Seth on that. Um, I know that I didn't clean the room this semester, but that said, you're a real trooper, and I just wanted to let you know that this whole thing has been a test to build your character. And uh, I'd like to end saying, buddy, really excited for your uh, near future here, great things on the horizon, getting married, but just always remember, whatever you say I do to, you'll always be our boomer. Our boomer. Our boomer sooner. And just to show our love for you, we're going to clean the room right after this video, uh -huh. and we're going to yeah. show you proof. Oh. Pizza time. Oh, hi, welcome. This is where Jimmy sleeps. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jimmy, it's been an honor being an RA with you. Jimmy, you're one of the most caring people I know. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Jimmy, you're a really good leader in the house. Jimmy, you got a great dental hygiene, so I'm gonna mix up your and mine's toothbrush. It's been really great getting to know you. Jimmy, you've been a fantastic roommate. Dude, your work ethic is crazy awesome. You've been a great role model all these years. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. Danny. We have to capture him in this video. This can't be like, this can't be just part of our friendship. This has to be everything about me. Answer all the questions. <laughs> the questions? <laughs> <laughs> the questions? <laughs> Always ready to laugh. Always ready to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Always ready. Really good example of Hannah. Uh, you've been a really good example of what a godly relationship would look like. No, they're not going to make eye contact until marriage. Really? My first semester here, I didn't really know anyone, but we had the same lunch schedule, so it really helped me feel included. Just that first semester helped me kind of get anchored in the house. And I really appreciated that. You're always a good person to talk to about, uh, about music. You're really good at drums, and that makes it fun to have conversations between the guitarist and the drummer. I'll miss it. Danny did a really good job at the escape room. Doing all those sounds and all that stuff. Danny like Zelda. Danny really, really likes how you mentioned the bows. Oh, oh no. Come back.
back to me. <laughs> Cool. Okay, now it works. Apparently, I don't know how to use a microphone, so word of advice would be figure that out next time. Um, but what I was going to say is, and this is school related, um, I think that joining a design team is something that a lot of people neglect to do. And I really benefited a lot from joining my design team. And I was able to reach outside the CCF community and make new friends and uh, just learn a lot about engineering, um, much more than I could have learned in any classroom. So that's really my piece of advice. Don't be afraid to get out on campus and join some extracurriculars, especially those that are engineering related. And uh, yeah, just learn a lot and don't be afraid to fail. Do I need the red? Oh, red button. Okay, it's on. Very good. Good. Hi, everybody. Um, probably the advice I'd have to give without getting long-winded, because we have a lot of people. Um, so coming from a guy who this is his second stint through s and so i technically done my four years and then another two. Um, the one thing I'd throw out there is don't give up. I know it's cliche. I know it's really cliche, um, but it's true. Don't give up on what you're doing. There will be times that will be difficult. they will be really challenging. Your feelings are going to be all over the place. You're not going to know what to do with your feelings. Um, and at that time, just take them to the Lord and give it to him. And also, cliche, but it's true and it's real. Coming from a guy who's been here for more time than he'd ever want to be. So don't give up. Take what you have to the Lord. He'll provide for you in that moment. And you'll be very happy that you get to sit on this stand on this stage at some point in time and say, yeah, Mom, I did it. Woo. Except my mom's not here, but that's okay. That's, that's what I'd have. I apparently have given a lot of relationship advice this semester. You get engaged and everyone thinks you know what you're doing. You still don't, it's fine. Um, so I'm just gonna continue in that strain of, and whether it's romantic or friendships, make sure that God is at the center of all your relationships because if you're pursuing a person because they make you feel good instead of because they make you more godly, then whether you're just friends or it's a relationship, it's not gonna be healthy and it's not gonna be good. So <clears throat> basically just whatever you're doing, Make sure you keep God at the center of it. All right. Uh, I'm not going to give advice on school because I still don't know how I've uh, gotten here. <laughs> but uh, as, as hard as the school is, um, just be sure to be keeping your relationship with God as your uh, first and foremost priority. Um, if there's ever a point where you're not actively growing in your faith and you think you're just kind of in this stationary spot, you're not stationary, you're backsliding. And it's, it's a very easy thing to miss, uh, especially with all the stress and busyness of school. Um, so you just be aware of that. That's my, my warning. And that's all I got. <laughs> Yeah, so I just want to echo what Danny and Hannah were saying. Um, and talking with Grant a little bit this semester, I've kind of, and through my small group as well, learned no matter what happens in life, um, being eternity focused is like the number one thing. Um, you can talk about school, friends, people. You can talk about your future finances. It doesn't matter. If you're not focused on God and that doesn't show in how you live your life, nothing matters besides that. Um, and then once you focus on that, I'm not promising everything's going to work out or be fantastic, but if you put in the effort, you'll graduate. So, I mean, that's good. <laughs> that's all I got. Uh, guys, I just say don't be afraid to take trips. Uh, when I look back on my time in college, I'm just like, thank goodness I went to Florida freshman year. I was like, seriously. I had a ton of stuff to do the next day. I was like, you know what? This probably isn't going to happen again. I've got my three friends here. They're all going to get married next semester. I was like, let's just go ahead and go for it. Um, and just kind of having that mentality of throughout college, like, it's not all about school. It's also about the relationships that you build. Uh, it's about just the community that you have. Um, 
So don't be afraid to just go out on a limb and do things that you may have not otherwise done um, in a normal situation. So additionally, uh, kind of to echo what Skinner was saying, um, don't be afraid to live radically for Christ. Uh, we've got really short lives, and we don't really realize how short they are until we get to the end of them, and then we just realize that, well, we've got trillions of years in eternity, have 80 or 100 years on this earth, um, and it all starts to make more sense then. So just keep that perspective. Um, don't be afraid to get uncomfortable, make decisions that may seem illogical to the world around us, um, and just always just... Uh, Put Christ first in everything you do. So, advice? All right. So, I don't have anything school related either, but if I had to give one piece of advice, it would be to definitely get involved in a local church in your community because that has changed so much for me. It's been probably the most influential piece of my spiritual growth here is getting involved here at Ridgeview. And it, getting involved doesn't mean just coming to Sunday service, sitting in the back, talking with your friends, and leaving right after it's done. It means going up and talking to the pastor, to the deacon, seeing how you can get plugged in, and seeing where you fit into the church, too. So I know for myself, I, um, I, I'm like, hey, I like to do sound. I've, I've do you need any help on the soundboard? And so I got plugged in that way, and then that evolved into me joining the worship team, and it's it's been fantastic to meet so many different um, members of the church that I really wouldn't have got the chance to meet otherwise. And so it's it's a great place to grow spiritually. So whatever you do, make sure you get deeply involved in service in the church. Hi, everyone. So if you're anything like me, when you're an underclassman, you came into college and you had a lot of grandiose plans of all the things you're going to do and how your life was going to go, what your degree was going to be maybe. Um, and what God has really taught me through my time at college has just been to let go of those plans and let him take control of your life um, and let him guide you. When I originally came in, I was in a different major and um, through exploration, I ended up switching, and just a lot of the things that I thought I wanted in my life have changed um, due to strengthening my faith, and a large part of that is through this organization. So I would just encourage you guys to be open-minded and listening to God's plan for your life. Hey, guys. Um, so I got two things for you. Um, I remember being a freshman, going to my first grad banquet, sitting in the chairs and like watching everyone on the stage. And I knew a couple of them. There were um, a couple graduating seniors that I had been attached to a little bit. You know, Hannah is very fond of one of them, Chase, um, big mentor of mine. But you just realize um, how fast time flies. Um, so don't take advantage of the moments that you're in right now and the friends that you have, um, even when school gets busy and you don't get to see them as much as you want. Because um, you realize whenever you're up here, um, the impact other people had on you and you look back on the impact that you may have had on other people. Um, and the other thing is school is all about balance. Um, I was sitting there in line thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to say? Because I was not prepared for this at all. Um, and then I was like, you know, school's kind of like a chemical equation. Why did I think that? I'm an engineer. That's why. Um, but if your chemical equation is not balanced, it's going to be really unstable. Your thing might explode on you. Um, the same goes for school. If you don't balance time for yourself, time with friends, time for school, time with God, everything, I know it's a lot. But that's what it is. That's what we're pursuing. And that's why we have each other and we have God with us. Um, and if you find the right balance and find the right people, um, then you're going to be all right. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm going to be real with you guys for a second here. I've been putting up a facade for this whole past year. Okay. I have not wanted to wear a mask one single time that I've told everybody to wear a mask. <laughs> I'll be real. I'll be real. But I did tell, whenever I did tell you guys to wear a mask, it wasn't out of, like, you know, just, you know, wanting to be a stickler with all the rules and stuff. Is ultimately so that 
um, CCF can continue to function the way that it has to be able to function um, with, with campus oversight and everything. So that, I just wanted to be real. I honestly, once I walk off this stage, I'm considering myself like retired from president. So like, I'm not gonna wear a mask to anything ever again. I'm not, I'll be honest. With that being said, I, I've been, uh, I've been with CCF since freshman year, the very first semester, and I've seen a lot of uh, grad banquets go through. Um, there's typically two mainstays for two kind of speeches. There's the first one, it's the slacker. That was a slacker throughout a college, and he's like, uh, you need to buckle down and study and do your studies. There will be time to have fun, and ultimately, you really, you really need to buckle down. And then there's going to be the other side of it. Somebody who didn't have much fun during college looks back to his college career and says, man, Life is about relationships, and you really need to not be so worried about your studies all the time. And ultimately, there's a dichotomy there, right? There is, there's definitely two ways to be going out through your college career here at s &T. You could be all focused about, you know, just having fun and trying to make the most of every second with that or you can just be focused on your studies 100% of the time. And like Ali had said right before I came on here, there's a balance in between both of those. Ultimately, you have the decision to, you know, make relationships with people. And so don't take, you know, don't take those for granted. But you're also here paying lots of money to study and get a degree um, and, and eventually potentially get a job, right? Um, and so with the school stuff, that's what I would say is just there's a balance between everything and ultimately it's going to feel like you're going to be tugging, getting tugged from five different directions sometimes and ultimately that's whenever you have to rely on those relationships that you built to be able to hold you up, right? But the other thing is ultimately you guys, you can make the most of your relationships, so have so much fun all you want and study a ton for throughout your whole college career. But those are, neither of those are the two most important things. The most important thing is the relationship you have with Christ and how you emulate Christ here on earth. Ultimately, we can be living it up, going you know, on vacation every weekend with our friends here in college and making a bunch of relationships, but what good is that if you're not furthering Christ's kingdom? You can be studying super hard and being a good steward of all the skills God has given you, but what good if you don't use those skills to further God's kingdom? And so ultimately, you guys, if you take anything from any of these speeches that people say, ultimately I want you to internalize that we are put here to serve God and glorify God. And so ultimately, um, that, that's the only thing I really want you guys to take from this is, Throughout your whole life, whatever you do, use the skills, use the relationships that you build with people um, to glorify God in all the things that you do. So, thanks. Greetings. 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 As you guys well know, college is long and sucky. I have been here a little longer as he, one other person, graduate student. Yeah, it's not, not nice staying here for another two years when you want to be out in four. But there are some things I've learned. One, as I've done, humor is great. When you're really down and just, man, this is sucky, guess what? There's a reason the military has morbid humor. Humor changes things. You go suddenly from going, oh man, this is dreadful, to this isn't quite so bad. And how do you get that? You get that by being with people, knowing people, being around others, whether that be people consistently, hey, I know you, or non-consistently, where you just don't know anyone, so you try to get a feel for audiences and particular types of people, I suppose. But if you're around yourself all the time, you won't get that. If you're around God all the time, you will. 
so take note of who you are around. All of my college career, I've, I've tried to make sure to be around people. Freshman year, I found one person and said, you know what, I'm going to, me, you, we're going to do this thing called English. Yeah, I hate it. So me, you, let English. That worked. That person was all of a sudden also in my degree path, so I was able to go, me, you, next class, me, you, next class, all the way up to devices. That was awesome. But that moved on, and then I found another person. This person, I had the best opportunity to mess them up. He was right next to me. When I say right next to me, I live here. He lived right across from me, both in dorms. He left his key in his door the first day. I saw that, and I thought, you know, I could just take that. <laughs> and then he would not know what to do, and maybe I could help him to find, oh, yes, there's the people down the street. They can help you with your key. Yeah, I ended up just knocking on the door saying, hey, man, you've left your key in your door. Went on about my day, and then the very next day, I saw something very particular sticking out of his door. The key, it returned. <laughs> so I had an even stronger urge to just take that key and act like nothing happened. But I knew what I had already done once, and I was like, OK, I'll be consistent at the very least. And I took the key out, knocked on his door, here. With that very interaction, he said, you know what? You look like, and you, the way you're doing stuff, you would be a good friend. Let's be friends. <laughs> and then I didn't see him for a month. <laughs> it was great. Uh, the next interaction I had with him, he was using a can opener to hammer in some pegs for a bookshelf. I had an actual hammer, so I gave it to him. Keep going on, keep going on. Calc 3, we took that together. Well, actually, we didn't take it together. We found out we were in the same class. So, since he's right across from me, we studied it together. I got an A. I think he got an A or a B. He wasn't very happy that I kept getting s better scores than him. He felt like he did better when he was studying alone. But time progressed. That relationship continued. I helped him with many a class, and he's helped me with many a class. Guess what it started with? A silly little key in the door I could mess him up with. <laughs> but because I decided to do something a little bit better than uh, mess up with someone, because I love trolling people. It's great. It's great. It's fun. I ended up being greatly benefited, and so did he. He's still a great friend of mine now. Secular, but I've used that as a great opportunity to show him, one, study habits and me, myself, I need him. But two, also it's a great dynamic, since we're great friends, to talk about God, to talk about the things that matter more than just school. Relationships, make sure you have them. Don't just be a loner. And even if you are a loner, make sure you have a good one with God. Jesus is our solid rock and our foundation. Thank you. All right. So first things first, drop out while you can. <laughs> Honestly. It's not worth No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, three things to summarize my words of wisdom would be, first of all, work hard, stay in school. Second of all, network with others just to expand your horizons, expand what you know, expand who you know. And lastly, worship God. That's the most important thing that us humans can ever do is just worship God. So, thank you. That light is so bright. Okay, let's save that best one for last time, right? No? Okay. <laughs> All right. I can't give you much school advice because, um, once again, not an engineer. Probably last time I'm going to milk that joke. But <laughs> I'm a psych major, just so you know. Um, 
after I thought about this for a moment, I realized it may not be that helpful for this crowd, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say it. There might be someone out there. Um, so after you have joined the design teams and after you have implemented yourself in a church and after you have made all of these friends and been on the worship team or um, served as an officer or done all of these things, I'm not saying you have to, um, learn how to say no. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, thank you for the snaps. Um, it's really helpful for me uh, as someone who wants to be involved in everything and do everything and get to know everyone and be friends with everyone because I love you all so much. Um, just, just learn how to say no sometimes. Sometimes you have to do the project. Sometimes you have to do the paper, and that sucks, but it's okay. And it's also okay if it's not about school, and sometimes you want to read a book for fun or you just want to take a second to breathe and be by yourself because school is crazy and life is crazy. And sometimes you just need that time. And most importantly, in that time, when you're feeling anxious and you're feeling restless, like it is so important to pursue prayer um, and pursue the Lord in those moments. Um, I know for me, when I'm getting anxious, it's because I haven't spent enough time with the Lord. Um, that's not a cookie cutter thing, but it's true. Um, I'm nervous. <laughs> as much as I sing in front of you guys, I do not like talking in front of you. Um, um, also, I just wanted to take this time to say thank you um, to this ministry and the ministers um, because even when I wasn't a student, you guys welcomed me in um, when I was going to ECC and you allowed me to be on worship team and like I have grown so much and it's, it's, it's really been incredible to like witness for myself and also just to be able to be a light to others um, and I hope all of you can do the same and experience that same thing. Um, Finish, it's definitely important to get involved in a church, but this ministry, um, even though it's targeted for college students, it's it's worth so much more than that because you look down the road, and for someone like me, it's going to be like, how did I get there? How did I get implemented in church? How did I build my relationship with God? It started here, um, like mostly. Um, I can say that with confidence. So. I just wanted to say thank you and that I love you all. <laughs> I, I wish I wish you well and I'll be praying for all of you. So Hello. Um, I didn't actually know that I was giving words of wisdom until like six thirty when the banquet started. Because Nathaniel came up to me and he's like, Hey, so when you line up for words of wisdom, just, like, make sure you're at the end. And I'm like, I just gave him this look like, uh. And he's like, you didn't know you were giving words of wisdom, did you? I'm like, no, I didn't. But <laughs> honestly, um, oh, my gosh. It wasn't that hard for me to come up with what I wanted to say. In fact, it's harder for me to decide what I'm not going to say because there's so many things that I could say to you guys. Um, this has been such an amazing first ministry. And a lot of that is due to the people in this room. And being so welcoming and encouraging of me, and I appreciate that astronomically. Like, it blows my mind. Um, as far as words of wisdom go, something that God has been repeating in my heart and in my mind ever since I started here what is that this ministry is a training ground you guys are gaining skills here that you can use for the rest of your life in serving Christ, in building relationships, in practical things. Like if you served as an officer, I mean, you're, you're equipped to serve in the leadership of a church. If, if you served on the worship team, you know how that works. If, if you... Uh, did a service project like you are equipped you are commissioned to do that like if if you were in a discipleship relationship then you know how that works go like therefore go forth and do that in the body of Christ 
if you are in a small group, if you led a small group, you have those skills now. So when you graduate and when you go forth into a new church family, use those skills. I mean, ask leadership, hey, can I lead a small group? Ask the leadership, hey, can I organize a prayer event? Or just dig in, get involved, because you are equipped. You are more than equipped. And for the um, underclassmen that are here, the freshmen, the sophomores, I want to encourage you guys, like, embrace the opportunities because this ministry gives you such an amazing chance to learn and to grow and to mature and to be so, so ready to engage in the body of Christ once you graduate. And I just, I, I have such a deep love in my heart for this ministry because I've seen so many people grow in big ways because the ministers have invested or a person has stepped up to lead a small group or a person has stepped up to be a mentor or a mentee. And it's just, <laughs> it's awesome. And honestly, like, ugh, I, <laughs> I really hate to leave but I know that God is going to continue to be faithful through CCF, and I am so, so excited to see where all of you end up and how much this ministry grows in the coming years. Um, so just to condense that, because that was a lot, and I'm sorry, I tend to be very wordy. <laughs> Most of the messages you've heard from me have been about 30 minutes, and I can't do that tonight. But <laughs> to condense that down into something that you can take and put in your pocket, okay? Be faithful where you are, okay? Acknowledge the call that God has given on your life. Acknowledge the skills that you have learned and be faithful because those skills you have required, that you have acquired now give you a responsibility to take that and to serve the Lord with it. Um, that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. I'm actually going to ask you to stand up here and stay up here for a second. And the other ministers are going to come up here too. We wanted to just recognize you a little bit, Kyla, uh, because we are extremely blessed to have had you here and to uh, have had you as an intern for not just one year, but two years. And uh, we, as a ministry, as ministers, we're all so thankful to you. We got you some presents. I don't know if you want to open them now, maybe later. <laughs> But we are so thankful to have had you as uh, a part of our ministry team. And, and I know for a fact that everybody here has been touched by you, whether it's been your sermons that you've preached or the small groups that you've led um, or the disciples jumping in and leading the discipleship group and, um, and, and facilitating that and touching base with different people as they're doing discipleship and investing in other students. Um, and then even beyond that, a ton of the women in this room and in our ministry can uh, say that they've been touched greatly and have grown and have really benefited from your impact in this ministry and in their lives. And so we're really thankful for you. We're super sad to see you go, um, but we're excited to see you where you go and, and um, maybe on the big screen of, of preaching somewhere, some way. Um, but we're, we're excited to see you go, and, and we just want to say thank you so much for everything that you've done in this ministry. I don't, you can open them later, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kyla. All right, so grads, first off, did you guys not go? Do you not want to go? <laughs> 
If you don't want to go, it's okay. All right. Hey, all right. Get up here, Ben. Come on, Ben. All right. Well, first of all, uh, I'm from the BSU, kind of. That's kind of where I dedicate a lot of my time and serve. Um, so I don't, I haven't served a whole lot with uh, CCF, but you guys have a heck of a lot of uh, groups and uh, service opportunities, and you guys need to recognize that, that you have been blessed with a house and ministers um, and a budget and, and funds to allow you to uh, have a banquet and serve food, and you have a chef, man, that's great, the BSU doesn't have that, but that's very cool, and I'm not, not trying to compare or anything, that's just very cool, you guys have a great blessing and uh, just be, be great stewards of that and uh, carry that out and introduce that to freshmen and people who don't live in the house, reach out to them as you guys do, um, but continue to do that because that is, that is huge. Um, like Kyla said, uh, that's, our, that's our mission to reach out. And uh, so, so very proud and thankful to know uh, a lot of you guys and Kyle and Mariah have been great uh, in my life. Um, Scott shot a, shot a deer on his property, so that was kind of fun. <laughs> um, but no, there's just a lot of good relationships, and I'm very thankful uh, to know you guys, and uh, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> all right, thank you, all the grads. Thank you guys for uh, sharing your words of wisdom. Honestly, it's a lot of good advice, and that's why we want you know all of the other students to come to hear your guys' kind of like parting words, your parting advice, and just the really awesome things that you guys have learned while you're here. And uh, I just want to say to, to all of you grads uh, that, that we as a staff, as a ministry staff, we're, we're sad to see you guys go. Um, right at about the time that you guys uh, come in and, and your, your little baby freshman scared, just like Blake said on his video, uh, scared to just kind of feel out the whole new world. And then at the point that you're standing up here and you're giving your words of advice, you're grown men and women. You're ready to go and be productive members of society. You're ready to go serve in your local church. You're ready to make a difference in the world. And so it's, it's kind of a, a neat bird's eye view from us as a ministry staff to see you guys in your transition. And you guys may not always see it. You guys may not always you know, notice it or recognize it, but you guys all have grown a lot. And, and I don't look at you guys as, you know, scared little baby freshmen anymore. I look at you guys as, as leaders, as, as strong men and women of, of character and of integrity. And uh, we are excited to see where you guys go and, and the things that you guys do, both with your schooling but also with your faith. Um, so with every kind of... Uh, marked transition in life. Uh, there's an acknowledgement of, of what has been uh, done, right? There's a celebration, and that's what we're doing, and, and I hope you guys feel, uh, you know, really happy about this kind of moment and, and, and this and us celebrating you, and obviously, as evidenced by everybody here, we love you guys. We really are happy to have had you guys around, whether it was one, two years for you guys that are transfer students, or whether it was three, four, five, six for some of you that have stuck around for a really long time. We love you guys, and we're happy to celebrate you. Um, but with every market transition, there is also kind of a charge to go forth. There is a, hey, what do we do now? What do we, what do we take from here? And a big part of that is the, um, the graduates' words of wisdom. Uh, and I just want to add kind of three things uh, to that for you guys. Uh, three things that I, I think of, and, and I, I try to think of, of new things and, and, and things that are really pertinent to you guys as you're kind of moving out into the world at the time that you're moving out into the world. And so these are three things that I just want to, you know, there's a lot of other things uh, as well, but these are three things that I want to impress upon you all. And so the first one is I, I want to impress upon you guys that, that Scripture would be your highest authority, that Scripture would be your highest authority. We live in a day and age where our culture, the people around us, uh, media, whatever, people want Christians not just to accept or be okay with things that go against what Scripture says, but they want us to, you know, to say, yes, we agree with it, you know, praise it, yes, we love it too, and participate and, and kind of flaunt it with the world, okay? And, and there's a lot of things like that. Uh, and so I want you guys to, you know, be firm, be resolute, Know in your mind that no matter how hard the, the culture presses, how hard people press in your life, that scripture is your highest authority. It is the where the buck stops here moment, right? It's God's word. That is the highest authority. 
Um, Mark Twain uh, once said that uh, at the moment that you start to see yourself or hear yourself agreeing with everybody else, it is uh, the time to take a step back and ponder, time to take a step back and think. And so how much more important is that, not just in life, but also as believers, when we know that we're supposed to be different from the world? And so I want to encourage you guys, you know, to take a step back. If you find yourself agreeing with everything in culture, take a step back, say, what does scripture say about this? What does scripture call me to do in this instance? And so make scripture your highest authority. The second thing I want to encourage you guys is to build community. Build community, not join community, not get involved in community, build community. Some of you guys will be really blessed and you'll be able to go into like a church that just has a community that's almost like just waiting for you to come into it. Um, you know, that's what we kind of want CCF to be. It's not always perfect, right? But we want to have a community and we want to build it to where you just come in and you're a part of it, right? And you can be, uh, you can be beneficial. It can be beneficial to you. But a lot of you, the fact is, you will go into a new place and you're going to be lonely. And you're going to go to some churches and you're going to be like, oh, I just don't fit in. And you're going to search around for community and you might not find it right away. You know, I pray that you guys do. But the fact is, a lot of you won't. When I first came to Rala, um, Scott Robinson, he's on our board of directors, he told us that, he said, you know, hey, it takes about three to five years to feel settled somewhere. And that's three to five intentional years. So don't be discouraged, but know that, you know, going wherever you're going, it might not be a place that has a community ready for you. So no use kind of like, you know, being mad about it or, or saying, well, everybody else has it better than me. You know, just say, you know what, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to build community where I'm at. And it's not just for the sake of having friends. It's for the sake of the body of Christ, okay? Because wherever you're building community, it's a place where other people need community too, if it's not, if it's not there. And as the body of Christ, we're called to build each other up, and we can't do that alone. So build community. The last thing is to be servants. Be servants. That's another thing that we talk about a lot in CCF, but whether we do it great or not so great at all, you know, part of the mission of CCF is that when you guys leave here, you are equipped, just like Kyla was saying. You're equipped maybe not to, you know, go run a church or anything, but not, nobody really is equipped to do that, but um, you're equipped to do some things for the kingdom, right? You're equipped to serve in a church. You're equipped to jump into a ministry. You're equipped to do a lot of things, and so I want to encourage you guys to serve, not just with your time, not just with your money, not just with the talents that God has given you, but all of them, and of course, for every person, there's going to be, you know, a variance of, of levels in all three of those things, but, but serve with everything that you have, you know, J.D. And, and many of the other uh, students up here tonight mentioned that the eternal things are what matter. The eternal things is what carries on. J.D. was a little optimistic. He thinks he's going to get 80 years on this earth. Man, I'm hoping to get like 65. But, you know, however long we have is so short in comparison to what is to come, right? And, 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 and these are the times when we do have to focus on that. These are the times when we do have to say, you know what? Yeah, we got a lot of life ahead of us, but what is carrying on? You know, what is it that I'm doing that benefits the kingdom in the future? And so uh, those are my three, three things for you all. Make scripture your highest authority, build community, and be servants. And so, uh, guys, I just want to reemphasize, you know, we are so happy uh, for you guys. We're so proud of you guys for all the things that you've accomplished. Not just graduating from a super hard school, um, but many of you getting jobs, many of you starting your next phase of life, like, already preemptively you're just like getting it going um but also the the ways that you guys have invested in this community whether it's ccf or your churches or rala like we see those things and you guys you guys are going to leave a hole here um, god is faithful he brings another crew in ready to, to fill roles but you guys are a really impactful crew of students you really are and uh, there's going to be a hole in a lot of different areas when you guys leave and so we really, really appreciate you all, and, and, and we, we really love you guys as seniors, and we're sad to see you go, um, but we're happy for you.